I'm River Bay, and welcome to my gun kingdom. John did a very good job with this. Uh, all of them were centered in the bullseye here. And just a few outside, but most of them were right there, made a big hole. And then we went to uh, some other ammo down here. I think these might have been, some of them were the Winchester power points. But yeah, this one for sure was a Winchester power point. Okay, today we're out here. Uh, we got a, a special guest, John Bowser's with us today. Uh, we're going to talk about the uh, the Marlin Model 60. John, these were introduced in 1960, and I think that's where they came up with the Model 60 from, right? And uh, these are semi-automatic rifles, and you know, there was 11 million produced and 11 million sold of these rifles. They, actually, they claim that this was one of the fastest selling sporting rifles ever made. The Marlin Model 60. What do you know about this gun, John? Oh, I know there's a lot of them around. I know a lot of people that have them. Back in the day, I mean, they say they started making them in 60. I wonder what one cost back then. It's something like $50. Yeah, I bet yesterday. you if not any more than that. And they're a well-built gun. This one looks brand new. Yeah. You don't it, know when this one was made, do you? This was manufactured in 1984. Yeah. They, Nice little 22, small gun. But this was is loaned out to me uh, by a friend, and uh, this friend has really taken really good care of his firearms, and uh, he took really good care of this one too. I would say it's 99% on the bluing, and probably 98% on the stock. I did find one little thing here on the left side here, uh, just a tiny little nick, but you really have to look hard to yeah. find it. But, uh, you know, in the 80s, John, um, they went to a, a last shot bolt open on this, so um, the bolt would stay open on the last shot. Right. Now, the earlier models um, of this gun, it didn't do that. <clears throat> and um, now this particular gun only shoots 22 long rifle you can't shoot most most automatics are that way they did produce some that would shoot shorts that's what they said before but, 1960 they did produce some semi-automatics that did shoot shorts but this one does not I believe my winchester will shoot longs also which i don't even know if you can find longs anymore that's basically a yeah 22 short bullet on top of a long rifle casing right but uh a lot of times, a lot of times, them scopes come with them too, which is a what is that a Bushnell? Yep. Yeah, Bushnell four power scope. Yep, four. Power. I know I had one for mine, which first thing I did was take mine off and and put on a one inch scope because I use it for squirrel hunting. You don't get any light with these. No, no, it's 15, <clears throat> 15 millimeter. Yeah. Is a lot of times they come on the gun. You can whip the gun, whatever. Which they work all right. I mean, just for target shooting. But I mean, uh, you can buy them for ten dollars. Now they did look. They did lower the cost of these guns uh, to make it um, affordable uh, for people on a budget. And what they did is they went to a birch stock instead of a walnut stock. Now this is walnut stained, right, John? Right. So a lot of them were that way. My little Winchesters. Same way, it's birch. But they did not skimp <clears throat> on the barrel. Uh, the barrel is 16 grooves, and it has a perfect um, crown on the muzzle to makes it, that makes it really accurate. So, you know, they, they, they made these guns for people just getting started shooting a lot of times, you know, beginners, especially beginners with semi-automatic rifles that are eventually going to move up to the larger caliber semi-automatic right. rifles, right, John? So it, it gets you some good practice, and it's an inexpensive rifle to buy to get that practice. Yep. And also, you can leave this by your back door if you have a farm. Leave it by your back door, and if you want to get varmints out of your backyard, you know, groundhogs, I mean, it's probably good up to 100 yards, right? Oh, yeah. Really? 
we're going to zero it in today um, at 50 yards so uh, we're at the 50 yard range right now and that's what we're going to do today and um, now let's go over the the action here um, we'll show you the uh, bolt here now it does have an arrow if you look carefully there is an arrow to get this to hold back you push actually push this bolt yeah. in towards the gun towards the middle of the gun and then to get it to release you kind of have to take your finger and pull pull it away and then it will close have you ever seen those john yep my winchester is the very same way oh, oh your winchester yep. 190 mm -hmm. okay so you push it pull it back and then push it in and it locks right. in place now i did oil this last night before we did that and it, and it is working much easier today since i oiled it yeah, this so, couldn't have been shot very much at all. No, I don't I mean, think it, this, look, it looks brand new. I bet this I bet this hasn't even had a box of shells shot through it at all. But uh, probably not even sighted in. Probably not. Probably not. We'll find out. Get heck of a little squirrel rifle. Yeah, this would be good for squirrel hunting too. Yeah, up to fifty yards for sure. But. Um, we're going to try different ammo today, and we got the chronograph here today with us, and uh, so we'll be able to tell you the different speeds. And this chronograph is set um, with the manufacturer suggested 15 feet away from the muzzle. So, so we brought some uh, some of John's stingers with us today. Those travel at 1640. That's a long rifle. Yeah, That's amazing these are about for a long fastest rifle. Fastest 22s right? you can get. Only 32 grains, and they go 1,640 feet per second. So that's something you wouldn't want to use for squirrels, but that'd be great for groundhogs. Yep. And then for squirrels, you could either use the CCI mini mags. You know a lot about those. Well, they're about the most popular shell there is, just uh, 40 grain. These are actually, well, they call, I don't know why they call them targo. These are 40 grain. They're not hollow points at 1,235. 1,235 feet per second. My favorite one for the Marlin Lever Action 39A is the Winchester 22 Long Rifle, 40 grain, 1280 feet per second. Those are my favorite. That works the best in that lever gun. I'm not sure how they'll work with this automatic, though. What do you think? Well, that's a fun thing with 22s. you got to find a shell that shoots good in it. Yeah. It amazes me. You can zero that in. You find a shell that groups good, then zero it in. Yeah. And you try another brand or even a different shell from that same brand and how much difference they shoot. Right. I mean, sometimes they'll be two inches off. So you always want to, with a 22, you really got to find a shell that shoots good in it, go buy a bunch of them. Right. Now, what I always preach in my other videos, John, and if you've watched my other videos, I always preach that you should use the same ammo to zero it in with that you're going to hunt with. What right. do you think well, about that? Well, yeah. So with 22, you'll find some of them. I've shot some of them. I couldn't zero it in because you couldn't shoot a good group with them. Say so first, you just get as many as you got. Get them on time. paper. Get it on paper. Get it on paper first. and see which right. one groups the best. Now take that one and zero it in. Yep, there you go. And what about shoot, shoot nothing but that one in? But then we've got you got your stingers for varmints for ground like uh, groundhogs that have power points on them or hollow points, but right. they call them power points nowadays. Um, well, these faster, lighter ones, if you zeroed in with the regular mini mags at 1235, and then you go to shoot these at 1640. It's going to have a bullet rise. It, it's going to shoot higher. Yeah. It won't have as much drop. <clears throat> it's probably not going to shoot any higher, but at longer ranges. That's why it's so important to zero the rifle in with the, with the ammo you're going to hunt with. Because if you don't, you're going to have a bullet drop or a bullet rise, right? Right. Yep. Now we've got some Federal here that we could try too. Now these are actually made for a semi-automatic. Yeah, the this, is, this is a, it's the only way you can get these uh, it's a ball auto, auto match. They're, they're basically, they're cheaper line of target loads. You buy in bulk, they're 40 grains at 12, I believe these are 1,200 feet per second. Yep, they are, yep. Because like my, I shoot the target that are uh, subsonic. Or 1070, but the problem is those won't operate some automatics. So for the automatics, they make this. That's one. a good point. I'm glad you brought that up. Even though it's a long rifle shell, 
your subsonics might not operate the semi-automatic right. rifles. Right? <clears throat> exactly. Okay, so be careful if you use those. That's why I believe they came out with these because they got a little bit more oomph. Okay. Than the normal. You you you, you shoot subsonic below the below the speed of sound actually shoot more accurate. And in competition, you're only shooting 50 yards. So the speed doesn't matter that much. Either. But you okay. sight mines like mine sight in it. At 50 yards, you shoot 100 yards, it drops about eight inches. But, okay, subsonics are good for target practice. Right. But they're not really meant for a, a hunting rifle that you're gonna hunt with, right? It's, well, they work good for short distances. Yeah, because they're, they're 30, very 30 quiet yards, too. Thirty yards. Yeah, I mean, but they're forty the, like, grain. They're gonna they're gonna be good for varmint hunt, but not at long ranges. Yeah, because the, the the actual the the, the actual the groundhog is gonna hear it before it actually right. gets That's there. Right. That's probably yeah. twenty-two. I've shot a lot of groundhogs. Yeah. And they duck down before the bullet gets to them. You shoot shoot a twenty-two even at hundred yards, or even with a, a mini mag, and you can shoot, then you hear the bullet hit. <laughs> it take it takes a. It takes a second to get there. Now, my friend um, and his dad, they uh, they lived on a farm, and uh, they had a really bad problem with uh, varmints, a lot of groundhogs digging up the property and stuff. And uh, my friend's dad called my dad, and he says, what do you suggest for a rifle for me for for uh, shooting groundhog? And, and actually, my dad told him a, a Weatherby 243. And he went at, my dad went out, and actually bought me one to take over to my friend's house and shoot groundhogs with. But we were shooting distances probably 600 yards. Oh yeah, those would shoot a long distance away. Yeah. Now a 22, you wouldn't want to, even a 22 Magnum, you wouldn't even want to shoot a distance no. like that. But uh, 22 Magnum gives you 150 yards. These would be perfect for backyard groundhogs right. that you want to get rid of. You oh know. yeah, so many Un anything under points. 100 yards, right? Well. Yeah, at 100 yards, say 100 yards, up, they, they move before the bullet gets to them. Yeah. They hear it and they duck. Yep. I've seen it happen a lot. But they, some of these stingers, though, now, that might do it at 100 yards. They get there. That's moving. Yeah. Now, I me measured the barrel uh, last night, and it is 22 inches. 22 inches long. It's a 20 to 22. I mean, that's about the standard barrel, which they claim... I think 20 inches, they say, makes the most accurate barrel. Now, one thing they did not cut expenses on with this rifle here is this brass tube here. They did not cut the expense on this. Well, they so, don't want them rust up in there. So if you end up buying one of these guns, at least you know this won't rust. About any tube fat I've seen is, is, is brass. But that they, even the spring is is very responsive in this thing, so you can tell it hasn't been used right. that much, this gun at all, so. And it's got a cross bolt safety on it too, so I think that's important when you have a semi-automatic, right? Oh yeah. A lever gun, you really don't need a cross bolt um, um, safety on it, because uh, you got the hammer on, on, a, on a lever action gun, but on a Well, they used to not have a safety, now they do it. Well, now they do. Ruger's putting them on right. there, and I think they're doing it because of liability reasons, but that's why it's important to, to shop on the internet for these guns. If you want a JM stamped Marlin that doesn't have a cross bolt safety when you're looking for a lever action gun, you got to look on the internet for a, for a, let's not say used, let's say pre-owned. Right. Right. Um, so there's a lot of good, a lot of good guns out there that are in really excellent shape that still have that JM stamp on them, and uh, that way you can get stay away from the cross bolt safeties. But on these semi-automatic rifles, I think it's a good idea. Oh yeah. Especially if you're going to hunt with it. Yep. You know. Well, because when it's shells in there and clothes, it's ready to go. Yeah, it's ready to go. You don't see a hammer. Right. You know. So. But it's going to be fun to shoot this thing. What do you think, Oh, yeah. John? It's you a nice little gun. Yeah. It's We're going to let John shoot just, it mostly today because uh, he's really good at zeroing in with scopes, and I'm glad he joined us today, right? Yeah. So, Beautiful yeah, day. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Stay tuned, and let's get going, right? Yep. All right.
And just that, that little scope is just, that's what they, well, I say a lot of them come with it back then. I've got one or two laying around. The first thing I did was take them off. Yeah, for this one, I would go with a 3 by 9 What do you think? Yep. Yeah. One just like what I got on mine. Yep. That's a heck of a scope. That we call 3 to 9 rimfire scope, bullet drop compensator, which I really didn't need it. That's just the way them come. Because with a long rifle, um, 22 long rifle, you're not going to shoot over 100 yards, so no. a 3 by 9 would be perfect. Well, those Federal are shooting fine, aren't they? You yeah, they are. well, I've shot them a couple different guns, and they <coughs> seem to shoot pretty good. You Let's get see. on the internet and read up, a lot of people, oh yeah, that's one of them ones, people either love them or hate them. Let's try the uh, CCI uh, Mini Mags, see how they do. So what we got, we got 1121 on that last shot fired, feet per second. So we'll load the... Uh, CCI mini mag now and these are 1235 feet per second I believe that's what they are there's 15 right there all righty <clears throat> I'm gonna shoot the same targets so I shoot at the bottom one It's up to you. Tell me which well, one. Well, I'll just shoot the same one. All right. See if we're putting them in the bullseye. Exactly. Oh, they're just all, all grouping. Perfect. Perfect. It didn't hold open the last shot, did it? Nope. Okay, so are they talking like late late 1980s? Since this is a 1984, it might be later than 1984 where they have the last shot bolt open. Yeah, I don't know what would hold it open. I mean, that's what, what holds it open there. Yeah. But it still fires nice. I think it's a nice little shooting gun. Oh, yeah. I mean, the grouping is pretty much close to perfect. Yep. So, we don't even have to sight this in. No. Because if I was going to use it, I'd definitely get a different scope on it. Well, what do you, you want to, you want to try a few of the stingers? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Let's try, uh, Five and I can see from here the bullseye is about one big hole. Yeah. <clears throat> see, that last one was 1137. Yeah, we, we ranged uh, from 1180 to 1137. Okay, so we're going to try the uh, CCI stingers, and they are 1640 feet per second here. And we'll just load five of those. Going to shoot at the lower target this time? Sure. Tell me which bullseye you're going to shoot at at the lower the target. The middle, middle one. The middle one? Okay. You got a bullet rise with those stingers. 
And that was uh, 11, 1542 with the Stinger. 1542, 1525 feet per second on that one. Shot way high left on that one. Boy, that one was loud. Them a lot louder too. You can hear them. They crack. Fifteen thirty on that last one. Well, I don't think there's any point in shooting stingers in this thing. Uh, but oh, you say they're shooting six inches high? Yeah, they're shooting. Well, like mine, you sight in at fifty yards, they got a six-inch drop at a hundred. Yep. And I know my gun sighted at fifty yards with the standard target load. I put stingers in, and it's dead on at a hundred. Well, I don't know what my uh, friend is going to use this rifle for, so I'm just going to, we're not going to mess with it with the stingers because the gun is zeroed in with the standard shells, like your 1,200 feet per right. second and your uh, CCI mini mags at 1235. I mean, they're hitting in the bullseye. There's no use sighting it in oh, with no, the stingers. No. And we don't even have enough stingers anyway to sight it in with stingers. But, I mean, if... If my friend eventually wants to use it for varmint hunting, then he would probably want to get a different scope and then sight it in with stingers. Right. But if you're going to hunt with squirrel, it, this setup right now is good for squirrel. Right. You know, so we're not going we're not going to mess around with it. It's it's. Uh, so my my old Winchester, I just had a one inch. I went from this scope to just a one inch four power. Oh, what a difference! They still have it. Well, just, just for the just, heck of just it, a difference. just for the heck of it, let's uh, let's shoot a few rounds with the uh, with the power points because we haven't shot any power points out of this gun. Let's see how they cycle. What do you think? Yeah, they're kind of they're a little bit faster than the mini mags. Yeah, let's. Uh, these are 12, 1285 feet per second. These are what I squirrel hunt with. How many you want to shoot for the power points? Five of them then. That'd be enough. All right. Is that? Probably hold it up. Put the bolt. Oh, I didn't put the bolt back. There we go. You know, it's working better since I oiled it. Oh, I'm sure. Say so that thing's been shot very, very little. Here we go. These are the power points here. And they've all cycled. See, mine, mine doesn't like Winchester hollow points, my Winchester gun. Your 190. Yeah. It doesn't like power points. Well, we'll see how this works with power points. Because this is what, this is the round I would use. This is the ammo I would use for squirrel. The Winchester. These Winchester power points, 40 grain, 12, 1285 feet per second, or 1280 feet per second. These are perfect for squirrel. Gives you a little more punch to knock them out of the tree. Yeah, see, they used to always make when you went to hollow points, it was lighter. Now they're realizing that 40 grain heavier is more accurate. So these are 40 grain hollow points. Yep. As you go to the Stinger's hollow points, I think they're 36 grain. Yeah, but they're faster. Right, because they're, li they're lighter. Yep. I'll let you go ahead and... Which bullseye do you want to go to now? You want to stay on the center one? Might as well, right? On the lower target, center bullseye? Yeah, you know, I can see if it's usually different. You're high, you're about two inches high from the bullseye. Now you shot that to the left. Closer. 
right. So they shoot higher than. Not, not, not much. Not. You were that last shot you did was actually it was uh, left of the bull's bullseye about half an inch. So they're about they're about right. And yep. it's cycling good with the power points, isn't it? Yeah. So this gun fires well with the Winchester PowerPoint, uh, 12 Any feet those. per second, 40 grain. So, you know, this is a nice gun. It'll, it'll shoot a variety of ammo. You just can't shoot shorts with it because they say do not shoot shorts with this cycle. gun. It wouldn't cycle. But you can shoot 22 long rifles with it. I wouldn't shoot stingers with it unless you're going to go groundhog hunting. You know, and then you'd have to zero your scope in. But they need to, they need to get a better scope if they're going to do some varmint hunting out to 150 yep. yards or 100 yards anyway. You, you, they need a better scope than that. But otherwise, it's a good shooting gun. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Appreciate you joining us. And uh, hit, make sure you hit that subscribe button, the like button, and hit that notification bell. And make sure you subscribe to the channel. There's always more future content coming up. And we'll have John come back. Right, John? Yep. Thanks.